Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this how to play video, I'm going to take a look at Odd Paladin. Finally, we're playing a tier 1 deck, so Odd Paladin is one of the best decks around nowadays. It's a very aggressive deck, so it's well suited for Hearthstone, and its greatest strength is that it's absolutely gorgeous against Death Rattle Hunter. If you want to be Death Rattle Hunter, this is the deck you want to play. I did not end up making my own build of Odd Paladin. So this is Lightburn's version. And why I ended up with this version? Well, I looked into statistics on how decks were performing. And I had one criterion in particular that I wanted deck to fulfill. I wanted my Odd Paladin list to have Double Void Ripper. Because Double Void Ripper is extremely good against Druid. Having Double Void Ripper means that you can tear through those spreading plagues. And this card in two copies actually gives you a very good chance to beat Druid, which can otherwise be a very tough matchup for this deck. So what does Odd Paladin really do? Odd Paladin relies heavily on the Baku buffed hero power, because Odd Paladin's hero power for two mana you get two 1-1 one -one Silverhand recruits on the board. And then you have means to buff up those recruits. You have Fungal Mancers, you have level ups, and you have raid leaders, there's even a chance to pick up a Sunkeeper Tarim from Stonehill Defender. There's many ways to buff up those recruits, and it's just an endless supply of those tokens and threats, and that's how Odd Paladin wins games. It's an aggressive deck, so you really want to start out on turn 1. There are plenty of 1-drops in the deck, you really want to have one available to you immediately. Then your turn 2 can be a hero power, turn 3 is sometimes a 3-drop, sometimes it's another 1-drop and hero power again. When you're playing Odd Paladin, you are one of the fastest aggro decks around, but you're still very board-centric, so if you lose the board with Odd Paladin, there is not a whole lot of reach, because you're still very much based on those buffs. Your reach is Leroy and Vine Cleaver. That's basically the reach you have. So when you're playing Odd Paladin against some other board centric decks, so if you're playing Odd Paladin Mirror, or if you're playing against the Zulok, or if you're playing against even Shaman, you really want to work on that board and control that board state so that the one who wins the board wins that matchup. However, when you're playing against something like a Death Rattle Hunter, which is somewhat slower and doesn't have good defenses, then you can often go for a different kind of strategy in which you hit face very aggressively and you just don't care much about their death rattles because it will take them a long time to get those active and you will be able to push enough damage and have wide enough of board. They don't have very good board clears anyway, so it's very difficult for them to wipe out your board before you're able to actually kill them. And if you're playing against control decks, then it really is a question of what kind of control deck. You're trying to be aggressive, but also hold back enough resources so that you can repopulate the board after board clears. Then sometimes they just crumble up and die, and sometimes it becomes a fairly intricate dance of them trying to set up for good board clears, you trying to set up for health totals that are difficult to clear, boards that they don't really want to spend their particle resources on. I can't overemphasize the importance of your hero power. Your hero power is your best feature, it's your best asset in this deck. So try to use your hero power a lot, fill in the gaps with the one drops, sometimes use the three drops and then drop in the five drops to buff. You want to build threatening boards so that, for example, if you're playing against control deck and they want to clear your board, but you can make it very cheap for yourself if you have mostly hero power minions there. But then they still kind of want to clear it because you can threaten level up, you can threaten fungal mancer. And this way you can get some of those board class out of the way before you use your actual buff cards. And then when you end up using your buff cards, you try to do it in such ways that it plays around those board class as effectively as possible. If there's a damage based plot, for example, and you have Fungal Mancer, if you have Protector, Argent Squire, you can use Fungal Mancer to buff a Divine Shielded minion, then it becomes much more difficult to clear. If you can get an unidentified maul that gives divine shield to your minions, and you can do buff plus maul, so you buff those minions and give them divine shield, that can be very difficult for the opponent to answer. Look for these types of opportunities. With this deck, it's also important to remember that even though you're very aggressive, there are many cases where you can climb back into the game if you 
lose your minions, but if you're playing against like a control deck, for example, it's very difficult to climb if you're placing another mid-range type of deck that has a very big board presence. You're just not going to claw back into that one. But if the board is empty on both sides, then you find a vine cleaver, you get to swing a little, you get to hero power a little, you might play some free corridor creepers, then you suddenly buff up your board and finish off with a Leroy. This deck can come back from very low resource states against control decks. That's one of the real strengths of this deck, because that hero power is so strong so that you can just keep creating resources and tokens and tokens and keep pushing. As for the mulligans with this deck, the single highest win rate card in mulligan with this deck is actually Corridor Creeper. Because whenever minions die, Corridor Creeper becomes cheaper, he will delve deeper and he will come on board and give you a big swing. Other than Corridor Creeper, you are typically looking for your one drops. One drops are strong, one drops are very very important. For turn 2 you have the hero power, for 1 you need to find a minion. In addition to those one drops you are often looking for some kind of powerful swing cards. Unidentified Maul is often a good keep if you already have one drops. Because Unidentified Maul, the effect, having that early weapon, it can be very powerful in matchups like Tzu or even Shaman. And then again, if you're in a matchup where you're clearly the aggressor, let's say you're facing something like a Druid, then you want to keep cards that make your board more powerful. So holding on to something like a level up can be very, very powerful there. Some types of Fungal Mancer, these sorts of cards can be powerful in those matchups. But don't keep these over looking for one drop, because if you don't have a one drop, then you're generally in a lot of trouble. But that's the basic mulligan strategy. It's about one drops, it's about corridor creeper, it's about level up fungal mancer maul. Not so much about raid leaders or stonehill defenders, the heroes, those are not the types of card that you seek there. You want to get on the board immediately, you want to have the swing turn available, and if there's any time, you want to have some power that you can put on the board. Overall a very powerful deck, one of the absolute best decks right now in the entire game. And let's go take a look at how I climbed with this early this season. I probably don't need a Firefly keep here. No, let's keep Protector and Bard. Alright, obviously Cleric is challenge, potential challenge, but I have the tools to be the Cleric too, so it should be okay. Alright, let's go. Radiant Elemental would be pretty strong. Don't have anything that immediately would be able to challenge that. Priestly. That's nice, right? Go with just the hero power here. Don't want to also coin the lost in the jungle over there. It doesn't do a whole lot to be honest. I guess I might. Let's see how this one goes. Obviously, Pyromancer can do some work here. Because Bard is coming down next turn. I could have played Lost in Jungle next turn if I didn't want these to attack next turn. That probably would have been a superior play. That would have played around Pyromancer better. Spirit Lash also. We'll see. Hey, Dark Reaper. Well, that's annoying. That is really annoying. Yes, I can't conveniently push through this. I mean, I could Void Ripper it and use three minions. I think I'd rather play the Bard. I'd rather play the Bard and wait. Because then I have the opportunity to Void Ripper. And use fewer resources. Potentially. We'll see. What kind of Priest deck plays Star Creeper anyway? Not sure. Can it have a Duskbreaker in it? Obviously Duskbreaker wrecks this board. 
and even leaves the Tall Creeper alive after it hits away the Divine Shield. Mass Dispel. Interesting choice. Okay, so then I'll just sacrifice these minions here. Then I'll just sacrifice these fellows over here and these guys are going to keep pushing. I'm trying to set up for a good level up, but I suppose he should be finding a Pyromancer. Mm, he did find a Pyromancer. That's inconvenient. Oh, I might just lose this game, I suppose. I don't have a way to deal with this Pyromancer. No, oh, and he's getting to draw a million cards too. That's useful. And Corridor Creeper comes a bit late. Fashionably late. Do I have any answers? No, not really. Tarim can potentially give me something later on, but let's see. Because these fellows are also going to die to Pyromancer. Everything is just falling apart here, but hey, that's the life of an acro deck. He might even have lethal this turn. Mm, I guess that's unlikely though. He would need like circles, spirit, spirit. Circle, spirit, spirit, and. Yeah. Unlikely to have lethal. Get, get rid of the Pyromancer, which is nice. Get a couple of more cards here. Then we get to then see another turn whether he has lethal this turn. And clearly a combo priest. So we'll wait and see. Some kind of a way for me to win this. That's what I'm interested in. Oh, with Void Ripper I can kill the Grizzly. I probably need to use the Void Ripper this turn. So I can kill the Grizzly and it also makes the Cleric a little bit weaker. It's still not looking good, obviously. There's, I mean, I should have already won if, I, if I'm going to win against a, this sort of combo resurrect style priest. I'm not worth taking a look into it. That was a top-notch draw, because it allows him to draw more. Now that I prevented him from drawing off the Cleric and the Radiant so easily. them all going to be Divine Shield. Oh, well, Divine Shield is definitely interesting. Probably need to kill this, but I'm I'm not seeing how I can actually win the game. Because after after Tarim is gone, I no longer have an answer once once he buffs the minions. So now I can just can't answer a buffed minion. But if I didn't do that, then there was a chance that I would just die right there, so... Tough choices. And he should have all the... he should have all the tools in hand that I needed to win this game. It'd be very surprising if he didn't. But let's go find out. For 9 mana I can't do Purifier small level up and hero power. I could do Fungal Mancer and them all. Five, ten. That's not enough to kill everything still. It's actually enough, just enough to kill this stuff. If I drop the Fungal Mancer here. It 
then I play them all. And then I need to bless one of these two. Then I can kill that one. And I can also kill this one. But obviously he can just keep resurrecting this stuff. It's not like... It's not like resurrecting this stuff is hard for him. Because it definitely isn't. I've already seen one mass dispel though, so it's possible that he doesn't have more silence effects. Alright, he got Leroy, level up or divine favor. That's going to be a big Lyra. That's going to be very, very big Lyra. Ten, twenty. That's enough, right? So then I just go face. Interesting hand. I can try to keep this. I'm expecting a mirror, although it could also be an even paladin. Braid leader actually isn't that great in the mirror. There's just a lot of one ones going on and stuff no, like that. We'll it's not paladin, so maybe raid leader wasn't a good keep. But corridor creeper is one of the highest win rate cards, and these are some of the best one drops. Oh, Bard is an interesting one. Bard is a really interesting one. I think I'll go with the Squire. I'll also coin the Protector. Let's try this approach. I get both Divine Shield minions on the board. They will kill his Righteous Protector next turn. And I will get a couple of 1-1s. One Bard is so I can take care of that one. I can get some more minions on the board. He will of course double trade with these. If he has a bard now, that's a pretty good one. He had the bard. And then I will respond with my own bard. Right. Yes, that is correct. I will respond with my own bard, and I will answer his value trades with value trades of my own. Alright, Karu can be good in this, this matchup. Value trading with the bard, obviously. Okay, didn't want to... Well, now, but with that, then he maybe wants to trade the bard. Oh, he has a godly hand. I had a great hand too, but his hand is absolutely godly. I can value trade so well. Not a whole lot I can do about that, really. The light protects me. I trade away his recruits here, obviously. I'll play my own. And I'll bless the and I'll bless the Divine Shield minion. He can still pop the Divine Shield with the Mekaru and then use the Corridor Creeper. But that would leave, would leave the Corridor Creeper down to one health. So that would still be decent. Oh, that Blessing of Might was solid. I think this was a pretty good turn from him. That's pretty nice. I don't have a lot of good stuff here. If he has level up, I think he wins from this position now. Because I'm just stuck not being able to do much of anything. 
I need to play the raid leader on this turn. I need to have the tempo. But if he has level up or fung elements, or I think he wins now. I had a good hand here, but he had a he had an insane hand. Good hand is not good enough against an insane hand. Yep, that's the way we roll. Probably need to do the jungle into Fung Alamancer. Because nothing on his board currently has more than 2 health. So everything I have is threatening to kill his stuff. But... Oh, he just gets so good cards every turn. It's, in, it's insane. Okay. I like a vine cleaver too. So I can kill the biggest recruit here. Okay. I'm still not completely out of this. Because I have a level up in hand. But what does he have? If he has a level up too, then obviously I'm toast. Just a divine favor. Okay. Why do you take the trades like this, though? So many minions. Okay, I need to kill this one. He must not find a level up. Do I use my level up now? Make four tree trees. He's going to have two cards available. Level up and fungal measure are huge problems. My entire board is going to get traded away. If I level up now and he doesn't have a level up, then my board survives. Yeah, I think I will have to level up here. I was considering leveling up next turn. Trying to get all these trades, try to get Flame Elemental and Firefly on the board. And hopefully get something done. I don't think I can beat level up, no matter what happens. I probably can't beat the raid leader either. But these two cards could, could be dead cards. Or if, even if there's like one Blessing of Might. I might still be able to beat that. So if he has to trade a lot of these one ones in, then that just gives me a chance. So there's no level up in his hand. There is a level up in his hand, he just wanted to kill off his minions for no reason. Well, I was never going to beat level up anyway, so... That was impossible no matter what. Yeah, that's a loss. I think I can try with this hand against a hunter. Let's see. Level up is a pretty good card. Divine favor a little bit less, so. But I can try to get recruits on two, recruits on three into level up on four. That's the current plan anyway. Let's see how it goes. And these righteous protectors are here to protect my recruits. That's obviously a nasty nasty thing. The egg. Does he have an activator? Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. I don't think I'm giving him a 5-5. Five, five. Either way. Quite the contrary, I think I'm just hitting him in the face with everything I've got here. Maybe he can activate the egg a couple of times, maybe he wins with that. Or maybe he doesn't have an egg activator, and maybe the egg is a dead card, and he just loses right here. So... Let's find out. It's really looking for ways to activate the egg, so... Not overreacting to the egg. 
was quite crucial here. Mm, he found one egg activator. That's sweet and everything. Now you got yourself a 5 5. I'm still going to coin level up and hit him in the face with everything. Because, yeah, you have a 5 5, but you're also getting hit in the face a lot. So now you better have a flanking strike too. And he had a flanking strike too. So I have 6, 7, plus 6. Which just happens to be 13. Fabulous. Time to repent, Hunter. You are dead. I can try with this. Keeping Void Ripper against Druid. It's it's pretty mediocre actually. But keeping Void Ripper against Druid, Void Ripper has higher win rate in Mulligan against Druid than it has against any other class, but I'm still not completely sure whether it's worth it. It can just sometimes count to stuff like like spreading plague. At least partially. But let's see. Druid in general is pretty bad. Sometimes you can rush them. Oh, because I love Odd Warrior. The yeah, Odd Warrior is fun, but it, it, this meta is terrible for Odd Warrior right now. I mean, sure, you beat up this deck, but there are not enough Odd Paladins around, and you're absolutely disastrously bad against all combo decks and Death Rattle Hunter. So, putting yourself in such a bad position generally isn't worth it. Well, next turn swipe could come down already. I think I'll play stone here and see if I can find something like a Tarim. But I can. That's a piece of good news. Casually healing 7 and drawing a card. Very casually. He could even coin a Spreading Plague already next turn. Which would be awkward. I mean, I can kill it with the Void Ripper. Actually, I can't if I do it like this well. Let's see. I just want to punch him in the face a little bit here. I probably should not have played the seventh minion so that I could clear with the Void Ripper if I need to. Because now there will be one, one minion left from the Spreading Plague. Yeah, that was my bad. I could also level up. I just tried to fight this. But then if there's a swipe or something... It takes a bit more than just a swipe. But there could be something. So my options are to kill one off and then Void Ripper. Gives me the fire one. The I guess I'll do this. I guess I'll try this. Let's see what happens. Now he has a fire one. I have a few minions on the board. They're not all very easy to clean up. Let's see. But druids, they are a ramping. <laughs> and drawing. And armoring. Still feels pretty decent getting rid of that. Does he have another spreading plague coming? No, I guess we'll find out eventually. I'll just go with some mushroom power for now. Let's see about this one. I could have also played the Tarim. Maybe playing the Tarim would have been better. And I guess playing Tarim would have been better. Alright, 
Well, Furion comes down. Sure, sure. Just your regular stuff going on, but what kind of mall do I get? Oh, I get the Divine Shield mall. That's an interesting mall. So which do you prefer, Control Warlock or Paladin? Control Warlock is better. Control Warlock is actually really, really good. I have the option to do Lost in the Jungle in the Tarim. So many options. I guess I could try that. Reporting for duty. Astral. The battle. I guess I can try this. Let's give it a try. I have a level up in hand too. So I'm shooting a bunch of damage. I'll give it infestation, get some arcane tyrants out there. Good stuff, good stuff. So I'm guessing... Okay, so he's at 26. I don't have 26 here, obviously. But I could do like level up purifier small. Push 21 and have divine shield on all of my minions. Wait a minute, level up. That's 10, 19, 19 plus 5, 24. 24 with the raid leader. Not enough that one either. I think I'll go with the level up and mall. And just push face with everything. Let's try this approach. Put him down to five. Everything has divine shield. You can obviously have naturalizes and all sorts of stuff. But I think giving this a try is acceptable. They can be swipes, they can be naturalizes. But overall, it's a little bit more difficult for him to now wipe all of this stuff. Oh, a Faceless Manipulator. Now, one of the newer Maligos builds then. Faceless Manipulator is rarely used nowadays. Still sometimes sees play in Maledrid. And he also has a naturalize. Well, he really emptied his hand for that one. But he did it quite well. Can't complain. And everything I got was pretty weak. So that's really unfortunate. That, that was actually a crazy turn for him. And it required him to have faceless swipe and naturalize in hand to be able to pull it off. So I will need to draw some cards. This one can't get through even if I get another Fungal Mancer. No, I won't be able to play another Fungal Mancer anyway. Speak your peace. Just draw as many as I can right now. That will be the right line. Let's try this approach. But now it seems that the Maligos Druid is winning. Because he still has plenty of armor to go. Yeah. More healing to go. All sorts of good stuff. And he can take a value trade also with the Tarim. Obviously, obviously. Oh, this one is going to kill the Tarim now. It's time for me to go in with the Vine Cleaver. See what can be done. There's still one swipe left in his deck, which is kind of scary. But buffing these by one... I have to trust that he doesn't have the second swipe yet. If he has the second swipe, that's just going to be too much. 
don't think there's a good way for me to deal with that. I could have played Bolster's part to have two one twos here. That simply would not be strong enough. So there is no swipe. But it's a druid, so he can keep healing up. He has already healed for 30 in this game again. More than 30, just the way the druids do. It'll be time for me to do the level up thing. Do I just want the fungal Elemancer out there too? I think I do. Let's play the fungal Elemancer out here too. And I'm just jamming everything to the face. Let's see if he has found the second spreading plague. Second spreading plague would be scary. Walkers would an ooze fit this deck. Mm, I don't think you need an ooze in this kind of deck. I mean, if I lose to Twig... I mean, I've already lost at that point. So ooze, ooze just isn't powerful enough offensively. Now I think he starts to need the... What Moonfire has been spent, so it's not like he can just jam Maligos and, well, he couldn't anyway deal 18. He needs the second Spreading Plague now. But if he has the second Spreading Plague, I think he might just might be fine still. So let's see, how many Druids can find double Spreading Plague easily? He's healing up, so he has healed up for like 50 in this game. How much exactly? 24, 34, 38, 41. Yeah, he has healed around 50. And I have 6, 9, 10, 11. 11, 15. Yeah, I have enough. Let's go face. So these druids, they they do heal a lot. More than 50 points healed. I think I'll try with the level up. Hey, Fungal Mazur, I just sent you back into the deck. Why are you here? Okay. I have to play Lost in Jungle. I, I cannot... I cannot skip turn one. This can be very, very good if Hunter has a slow hand. But this can also go very, very wrong. If Hunter has a faster hand, I can't get board presence. I don't think I've seen a hand like this before. But yeah. This either goes very well or very badly. I'm more on the this is going to go very badly camp, because in general you don't want to fill your hand with 5 drops when it's your opening hand. I kept one and then my 3 draws, Fungalmancer level of Fungalmancer. I need to keep making these tokens here. These tokens are my lifeline. These tokens and level up, they are my chance. Please don't have a play dead. And if, that's a, if he coins play dead here, this will be very, very difficult. But at least there was no play dead. I need to keep making these tokens. That's my only chance. Level upping next turn. He didn't have a play dead. Or at least he didn't want to coin it. But he can't coin a Mossy Horror yet. It only comes down next turn. And I just level up and punch everything to face, even if he uses some Death Rattle activators. 
Is he going to cube this? Cubing the egg is generally pretty weak, but... Oh, Ziliax is strong. Ziliax is strong. But now that he played Ziliax here, that means that he cannot... Coin Mossy Horror. Which means that I'm not going to spend a level up yet. If I spend level up, two minions will die still. Because I can do Raid Leader. Then I will still have to sacrifice two minions into the Ziliax, of course. Which is sad, but that's the way it has to go. Then I will have have this board again. Now there's some incentive for him to like flanking strike the Raid Leader or something like that. But then I just level up and keep pushing if that happens. Right now this looks very good, but of course this is the best matchup. Okay, so he gets to kill three of my taunts. I suppose I'm fine with that. Because these fellows, these fellows are all going to face. Like, no chance these are going anywhere else. Wasn't quite lethal, but... What are you going to do about this board now? That seems like a bit of a problem. But he's a man with a plan. That plan is not going to be enough. It's a decent plan, but it's just not going to be enough. You're dead on board. Yes, that would be 9 damage. And you are at 7 health. That is just really, really scary stuff. Well, let's go. If he hits the board, clears, it will be over soon. Oh, it's two. Oh, that's intriguing. All right. Well, this matchup is actually pretty close to even. Not attacking here is probably the move. I think I'm coining out the mall. Because coining out the mall allows me to take board control from those two flame imps, at least for the time being. And having board control is good. That's obviously a pretty decent card. Hit, 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 right. Four minions die, Corridor Creeper is free. Burn. That's the way this goes. Hit there, hit, hit. Then the Righteous Protector and the Corridor Creeper and some more Hero Power minions. But nowadays these run the Despicable Red Lord. So he has some tools out there. And he can also have a hand like this. Four mana to get 9-9 nine nine stats on the board. It's never a bad idea. I probably need to play around the Dread Lord. That means playing the Boister's Pod. Then I think I need to trade away that one. I think this is the line. This should mean that I still have something to fungal mans the next turn. Most likely. Because simply attacking, he can only kill this one. So I can use this one to trade. Or do I use this one to trade? I could have a 4-5 or a 5-4. 4-5 is better. So I trade this one here. 
they're not a fungal man, sir. Well, of course, to go down to two health after trading. But I'm still playing around the Despicable Red Lord. And I'm still having the board. But this, this was a pretty strong opener from the zoo. No doubt about that. My ability to play around Despicable Dreadlord is getting weaker. I'm quite confident there's going to be a Despicable Dreadlord in that deck. Grizzly doesn't look all that bad right now. Need to take the trades. I mean, he had the imps and the chain gangs and the ghouls. So he had like everything that gives him lots of stuff immediately on the board. Now interesting times are beginning. Soul infusion. Double soul infusion. What's the big thing that's going to come down? It's a huge despicable dreadlord. I have only 8 damage here. I can't even kill it. And it's going to kill... Oh my! That's going to be such a huge problem. I will have to spend a level up. Just so that I can try to get rid of this one. Well, it's bigger than a giant. And it deals damage to my minions every turn. What's there not to like? I did not have to trade the... I did not have to trade one of these. This was incorrect. Yeah, I didn't have to trade the... I did not have to trade the Stonehill Defender. Well, at least I can kill that. But he's going to have another one in his deck. Can he find it? That's the big question. Can he find the other one? Not yet. So raid leader, grizzly firefly. Hit there. Double trade the other one. If he can find the second Despicable Dreadlord, that's going to be huge, because there are currently three minions that die. If he can find it, he's really looking for it. Oh. Can he find it? He's looking for it. He's still looking for it. Well, he didn't find it. That's a piece of good news. That's a... Oh, it was a wood doctor, okay. So I have... 4, 6, 8, 10, 14... That's lethal. Phew. That was an that was an interesting game against Sue. And I'm going to try to get some other other new kinds of things up there as well. See if we can get any viewers. But so is my stream, so I guess. I kept them all because I considered it possible that this would beat Sue. But I really, really needed a one drop too. I think by keep, I thought that by keeping one card, I would be likely to find a one drop. Kept three cards, but oh, if he coins now, he's definitely two. That's two, all right. I might still be able to recover from this, precisely because I have this small. But if I had a one drop, that this would just be much better. I would assume he trades. 
then I can swing back with them all. Unless he heals. Oh, if he has the Voodoo Doctor here, that's going to be huge. Oh no! Not the perfect cards. Ouch. Why? <laughs> Thank you for the cheers here, Bonita. Oh... This is so painful. And he has two more cards that he kept. So... Mine is to find a two that beats me. And I could do veteran hero power. I still can't get through. I can't get through with them all either. I need to do the hero power and the veteran. This is better than doing them all. But if, if he finds another healing card, then this... Oh boy. This is getting, going so so badly right now. <laughs> this is insane. This is insane. I needed a one drop top deck here. <sighs> that was that was an insane zoo hand. A completely insane zoo hand. There was even a kill asset and a light warden and he oh boy. And he can just keep value trading. I suppose this one is not going to end up well. I'll still try, of course. I will try. I really thought he would be value trading, but apparently not. Burn. Well, I have to kill this one. Uh. Then it's Stone Hill oh, and Hero oh Power. God. Righteous Protector, yes. I will need those. I will need those. Now if he also has a Despicable Red Lord. Usually can't be two with such a crazy opening. Yeah, it looks a little bit bleak right now, I admit. Just a little bit bleak. Oh! Now it looks really, really bleak. Just protector and fungal mancer. That that was just a really, really crazy, crazy draw for the two. Why did he sacrifice the? Why did he sacrifice the? Light warden though. I mean, he could of course have like a doom god in hand. Doom god is always lethal. There are no outs for me against the Doom God. One more mana and I could play Vine Cleaver and the Blessing of Might. So I could get a pair of tree trees out there this turn. But that's not going to be good enough. So this is what I really need to do. And if he has one damage from hand, I die. But he doesn't always have one damage from hand. I don't think I don't think making two tree trees here was going to be any kind of an answer. I just would not be able to survive to follow up anyway. Obviously I die the moment he finds soul fire. So that could be kind of an issue. Or he can have the Leroy Jenkins, I guess. Yeah, that was that was solid. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.